Hello, and welcome to Wednesday Wandering. Normally, I would be out somewhere on one of my trails here on the property, but unfortunately, well actually fortunately, it's raining today. We need the rain, and so I'm not begrudging that. Um, I'll miss my daily walk, but that's okay. I'm going to talk to you instead. Um, I want to briefly talk about uh, the, the Thomas story from last Sunday. I know that you that uh, watched the, the Sunday service video that I put on YouTube, um, I know that you, uh, you got to hear uh, John Tucker speak. I, he was our guest preacher uh, this last Sunday, and he talked about uh, our brother Thomas, um, Thomas the Doubter, Thomas uh, Didymus. Um, and I, so I want to speak on that too, but maybe in a little different way. I, uh, just, just to begin with, uh, the word Thomas, the name Thomas, that's probably not his real name. Um, Thomas in, in the Semitic language means twin. And Didymus, which is his other name, also means twin. That's the Greek version of twin. And so what we're really calling Thomas is the twin. Um, so that's really kind of a nickname. It's not really his real name. There's a lot of speculation about what his real name was. Uh, there's, you know, some of, the, some of the lore has it that his name was really Judas, and he was the other Judas in the group. But in the first part of Acts, when they list all of them, there's Judas and then there's Thomas. And so that doesn't quite fit. Uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the Coptic tradition, that's the Egyptian tradition, the ancient Egyptian tradition of Christianity, uh, in the Coptic tradition and the Coptic writings, they had something very interesting is they related that the twin was Jesus's twin, that was his twin brother, Judas. Uh, and um, of course, we, that's, that's a different thought altogether, and we don't really believe that one. Um, but it is kind of an interesting idea that, that Thomas the twin could be Jesus's twin brother. Uh, of course, nothing in gospel holds that up. So it's just an interesting thought more than anything. But what I wanted to talk about uh, Thomas was that uh, I don't see Thomas, and, and a lot of preachers, uh, you know, as, as I look through a lot of the videos that a lot of the preachers around the area have, have posted or the, the other Methodist pastors have posted in their churches, whether they were YouTube or whether they were live streamed and then I watched them later, a lot of them addressed this and they talked about how uh, they don't look at Thomas as being... Um, that Thomas is getting kind of a bum rap, that he's really not a doubter. And I'm going to pretty much say the same thing. I, I think he gets uh, a bum rap here. I see Thomas more as a realist, uh, someone who sees the, wor the world as it really is, and then expresses his thoughts about that. Um, in some ways, he, he, he doesn't have a little bit of a, there's a filter missing there a little bit, and he just speaks his mind. Uh, that just reminds me that, that Thomas really is uh, a prophet more so than anything else. Uh, a prophet tells you what the world is like and then usually offers you solutions. And uh, it's usually two different paths you can choose. You can choose this path or you can choose this path. And uh, choosing this path here will get you, well, it'll get you down a bad place. And if you choose this path over here, well, that'll get you to a good place. And so you choose, and that's kind of how a prophet works. Um, in, in, a, in a previous story of Thomas, Jesus has decided it's time to go back. Go back into the danger area, go back into the Jerusalem territory. Uh, and uh, Thomas, at that time, when Jesus decides to do this, okay, let's, it's time to head back. Thomas goes, oh yeah, let's all go do that. Uh, you know, they just tried to kill you, and here we are, you want to go back. That's a great idea. Um, but he, what he, what he, how he puts it is in more of a, uh, I'm going to say sarcastic way, he says, yes, let's go do that. <laughs> let's go all die with Jesus. Uh, and again, I'm probably paraphrasing that a little bit. But in some ways, I see him as, as saying, you know, going back there. And he does it in a, in a, in a very, uh, maybe a, a sarcastic way, uh, or a, and he, he looks at that whole scenario and he says, yeah, let's, let's just go back and, and go back into the lion's den. Let's go back and face the lions all over again. And let's do this by our choice. And so 
but what he but what Thomas actually is saying is true is going back does lead to the death of Jesus of course that leads us to the resurrection also which is um, where we have this story from this last Sunday and that's where Thomas is while the and, and here's what's really interesting to me about it while the Apostles are all uh, Jesus had told them that they would all abandon him that they would all flee and uh, sure enough that's exactly what they did and then uh, where they all saying to Jesus yes we'll stand by you no matter what we'll always be with you we'll be you know we'll, we'll we're right behind you the whole way here they are hiding in a room afraid of what the Jews might do what what those that are hunting for Jesus's followers might do to them so they're all hiding back in that upper room it's probably the same room where they had the Passover feast and there they are now hiding in that room but Thomas isn't there Thomas, interestingly, Thomas, the one that we look at as the doubter, as the one who, who doesn't believe any of this thing, the one that, uh, that shows maybe, uh, you know, has been interpreted as fear back when he says to Jesus, uh, uh, back in the earlier story where, where Jesus is going back, his, his statement to Jesus, by some look at him as being maybe a little cowardice, but I find that just courage. That he knows what's going to happen, and yet he does it anyway. And, as, and, and again, I see courage in Thomas while the rest of the apostles are all hiding up in that upper room. Thomas isn't there. Thomas is still out in the world facing the danger. And I just find that fascinating that, that we've given him this idea of a doubter, and yet he is the one that's really always looking at the truth, looking at the danger, looking at the future, or being in the danger, the one that's out there doing it. And I find that kind of fascinating and interesting about uh, the character of Thomas. I don't see Thomas as being a doubter so much as a realist. And he says, I want you to prove this to me. Um, I've been out there. I know what it's like outside these doors. But I want you to prove to me that, uh, you know, I'm going to have to see this. Uh, because he's a realist, because he, he's founded in, in, in the reality of the world and not in some mythical idea of the world, but it actually founded in what the real world is like. And I hold on to Thomas because of that. I really admire Thomas's uh, ability to face the danger without flinching, to move forward, stating his mind, speaking his peace, but moving forward. I think uh, uh, through a lot of my life I have been uh, seen as that way, someone who speaks their mind uh, regardless of the consequences, regardless of that, and sometimes I think that may be true, that I, I fail to use my filter very well on occasion. Uh, and if, if you have ever, if I, if, if we have ever run across each other, whether I have come across to you that way, I apologize to you, but that's just the nature of who I am. And uh, I meant no offense to you if, if that happened in anybody that has come in contact with me in the past. Um, well, that's the end of my Wednesday wandering, my wondering about this story. Uh, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to listen. Um, I think part of, I think part of what Thomas teaches us is that um, we must always look at the world as it really is, not as we wish it were, but as it really is. And right now, in this time where we need to be self-isolated. There's a lot of doubters out there in the world. And I want you to know that when we can get together on Sunday, the very first opportunity that we can, where I feel safe and I know you will be safe, then we'll meet. And we'll not meet until then. We will not come back together as a family uh, in one building until we both, you and I, feel that it is safe that we can do that without endangering each other so my my words to you are I look forward to the day where we can meet again and where Jesus will be in the room with us and those of us who have doubts those of us who have fears and those who have the courage of Thomas will continue to be um, ever hopeful of the resurrection and of the joy to come and so I look forward to that celebration together and I remind you that Christ is alive. Hallelujah.